Hi there, friends. For those of you joining me, I am working on a painting of the Redondo Pier that I started a couple nights ago. I'm just going to be painting and make myself available to answer any questions you may have, okay? So I'm just going to keep painting and you're welcome to chime in and join with me and ask me questions. I'm using water mixable oils and I have a black and white version of the image that I took at the pier a couple days ago. And that's just to help me with my scale, my sizing, my lines. And then the colors, I'm working from, and I'll pull it up on my phone, I have a, the digital color picture, which I posted a few days ago, and I will at some point get that up on my page as well. I'm trying the YouTube studio, which is new to me. So I might stop and start and then try and splice it all together and edit later. But you are the lucky one seeing the raw, current, new, new Suzanne Studio online edition, okay? Thanks for joining, and uh, I apologize if I don't answer your questions right away, but I'll do my best. Oh, here we go. I'm going to see if I can answer questions. I don't know if I can do a split screen or not, so we'll see. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. There we go. I now have figured out how to do a split screen. I feel quite accomplished. Okay. back to my photo from the other day. I know it's terribly exciting when there's only one person watching, so. So for those of you just joining, this is this is just a dress rehearsal in, in a, a simple sense of it. I'm tagging just a few friends who have been to my previous lessons. And on my phone here, got my phone, I'm going to pull up the image of the pier. 
This is going to be my color version. Nope. I don't need a picture of me. Okay. So as you can see, I'm working from a digital version of my image. And I, what I am missing is my water, my water container. Ah, I found it. It got moved behind. So, so I'm just going to keep working through this painting and I'm mainly just videoing myself so I can get familiar and more comfortable with this, with this setup. Okay, the nice thing about water mixable oils is it doesn't use any toxic I mean I don't use toxic stuff anyway but it doesn't have a, um, a strong odor which when we're in a home with all these kids can be a little frustrating so um, I know I wish I could bring the camera closer too. So maybe that's something I'll be working on tomorrow is getting my camera closer to my image. It almost sounds like it's raining. Is it raining where you live? So I'm going to be adding the trim. Well, architectural details. The fun thing about painting something like this is I don't have to have it precise. I'm keeping it fairly loose. You know, I just thought about something. So give me a second. I'm actually going to move this whole table carefully closer. Because I can't move the computer, but I can probably move myself just, just a whole lot closer. Without 
without sending art supplies everywhere, right? So every time I work on a painting like this, I like to work from the top down. So I'll do a, a layer, then I'll come back and maybe left to right, and then top down. I'll find little sections to work on it to keep refining those details. So I can, I'm, and I'm paying attention to what color I have on my brush. So I've got some vertical lines here and here and the, what would be the window frames of the structure around the windows. So those are all consistent lines and shapes that I'm going to work with. And I want there to be some depth to my painting, so I don't want it to be flat. And again, if somebody wanted to be really a stickler for my style of painting, my answer is, if I wanted it perfect, I would have taken a picture, which I did. But I'm, I want to take it beyond just the photography portion. And again, there's no, it doesn't have to be perfect in this particular style that I'm going for. I just want it to read comfortably. So every time I have a light color applied, I know that there's going to be something darker above, something darker below. So it's going to make those two colors balance. So I'm going to be working on that type of effect. Um, There's some lighting over here. And there's something light on the roof line over here too. Okay. And the structure here, it has four triangular shapes. I think it's over the balcony or the um, the outdoor eating area. Okay. So over here, we have a little patio zone. I don't know what else to call it. But the windows are, it's not even windows, it's probably just like a, a partition Nice thing about this new technology is I can expand my image. I can put it right up here. It sounds like rain is, has arrived. It is raining out there. So the restaurant building I'm actually doing is Kincaid's on the Redondo Beach Pier. It's been quite a while since I've had a meal there. So I think when this... When this is all done, I might be heading out that way. So 
So I'm now going to do vertical lines. Some of these lines represent windows. And some of them represent pillars. And it looks like the one over that I'm about to do is the top of a door jam, which is going to be about there. And there's some glass behind. So I'm just going along and just painting the shapes and the colors of things. There's another section of balcony or railing. Do they have, I didn't know they had a, maybe a rooftop balcony for parties perhaps up here. It's been a while since I've been, never paid attention to that little detail before. All right. Now sometimes when a section gets a bit muddy, I just need to take a break from that, move on to something else, and come back to it. Okay. And I have another vertical. Another vertical. Then over here, I definitely have a door. Above the door is split into three panels. And then there's a quite a detail. There we go. It's almost too quiet, isn't it? I should have background noise. Actually, in a strange way, today was kind of a noisy day. So the quiet is quite lovely. Okay, so one of the last details I'm going to do is will be the railing of the pier. I'm going to get everything that's behind it. So the there's a patio, a dining outdoor dining area. There's red pillars. I'm going to get all of those put into place. After I've done some work here, I might come back down and work on more of the ocean. We've got some beautiful waves underneath. Um, underneath the pier. I worked on a little bit of this section the other night and um, I find working on water is quite therapeutic. It's quite relaxing. So I will probably do those later on into the evening. Um, I don't know how much of that I will video live, but I'm going to keep the stream going and uh, You're welcome to 
drop me a line over on Facebook or um, put a message in here. And I don't know how I'm going to find it yet, but we will. Okay. So I've been painting for about, well, the video has been going for about 25 minutes, but I will let you know how we're doing. Okay. I'm going to pause it for the moment. I guess I just leave it going, huh? All right. So this railing or this pier has a concrete foundation or the, uh, well, the, the pier pylons are the foundation. But there's a slab of concrete that the building rests upon. That's what I'm working on right now. Now I've done a few layers and I let them dry for about 24, 48 hours since I last worked on this which makes coming back to it quite breezy, easy. And I think I need to add a little red. Red to my palette. And my palette today is not super fancy. Nope. Paper plate. So this red, it actually is, has a much more of an orange tone to it. And I am going to put a little bit of color that indicates that rust. I'm calling it rust. That has obviously dripped. Okay. It adds a little tone. And I have a deeper red. Or some of the other bits. So it's browns and reds. At this point, I'm going to make sure that my direction, what direction am I painting those lines? Those are important. So again, I'm locking those in. 
concrete has such a fun variety of colors. It's cold, yet it has these some of these warm tones in there. Now, if I want to cool it down a bit, I can add a little bit of blue. And yellow. All right. Now, if I want to tighten up some of those pylons underneath, I'm going to mix a little bit of my red and my blue. Sometimes I have to look twice at what I'm, I've been painting to make sure I keep myself in the right spot. You know, what am I painting right now? What is that panel? Is it glass? Is it a door? Is it an open space? What color should it be? Should it be green or blue? What color is that glass? So it's just a color. It's a reflection. So I have a reflection here. My colors are a bit turned around. I need a little bit of purple in here. I've got some sections that need just a little deeper tone, but I don't want to use black. So purple is a good go-to or a violet.
Okay. I'm looking at it in reverse on my in my picture. So I didn't notice this before, but my picture is flipped. It's reversed from what I'm actually painting in my monitor. So I'm working from left to right, which is the opposite of what you've got. So. I think I'm going to work on the door, which is this panel here. So I've got my yellow ochre, sort of a beige color, a little bit of the orange. My goal is to make it a wood tone because it's a wood frame. And I'm using a flat brush. Which will help me define that shape. And again, no one's going to take out a tape measure and measure to see that I've done this perfect. Because that would be not a good idea. Not a good idea. And then panels, because those doors, those doors. I think there's, it looks like there are steps, concrete steps. So I'm going to go back to that bluish concrete color and indicate those steps. And there we go. It's a little bit of indication that something's going on there. All right. It's time to find a turquoise and pay attention to these vertical lines. This is a lamppost.
That lamppost actually goes right above. And it needs to be darker. That was not the color I want. green to this. So there's one lamp post, and there are a, at least three in front of this building. So this one will be about here. And then there'll be one at the end. Okay. Time to put those shadows under the eaves of this building. So I'm going to create a bluish line. All right, let's do the eve of the the next patio, which is right up front. So we have the red and purple. It seems like a a brick red. No, I hesitate to say the word rust, but it's definitely in that family.
go back into that red. And I'm going to redo those vertical lines. So there's three pillars here, one at the back, and that's holding up an awning that goes over a patio. All right. All right, so that's about 45 minutes of painting. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and stop right here, and I'm going to take a break, and I'll do another video in a little while to continue, okay? Forty-five minutes straight. <sighs> I don't know if I should do that PE now or. What are you doing for PE? Yeah. Mm -mm. John's. Don't worry about it. you. Don't do it tonight. Is John asleep? Mm -hmm. I can kind of hear him snoring. Okay. Every once in a while. I know he's going to bed because he's he's turned off the TV too. Or, he, I mean, if he is awake, he's got it on really, really light, but 